Okay. All right. All right. Welcome to Six Scale, everybody. Um, I touched the document chat. Um, add your name as a, an attendee when you get a moment. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, you should be seeing the our meeting minutes of Google Doc. Okay, um, so we're uh, today uh, for the agenda items added a few things. Um, talking about tooling, uh, I want to focus on tooling. So we've had we've had a number of discussions on the mailing list um, to talk about different tools um, that we can measure. And measure is a you know one of our important initiatives that we want to go through. We want to measure performance. We want to measure scale. So um, I could see there being sort of two tools or at least two different sort of verticals that we can go after, one for performance, one for scale. Um, so I figured we could take time today to discuss uh, some of what's been said on the mailing list and see if we can kind of capture some requirements, the details, um, prior art, everything um, that we can think of that goes into um, solving some of these problems. Um, so I figured we could just start with one and then let's just see how far we get. And um, we can always uh, see how see if we get to the to both. So I figured we could start with performance. That was kind of the, one of the ones that um, there was a lot of mailing list traffic on. Um, David, you talked about it a bunch um, with some of your, what you looked at with the profiling. Um, and then Fan had also mentioned he was interested in doing some work uh, around this and, and some tooling work he's done. So um, I figured we could start. Um, I, don't know, I think we can start with requirements. Does that does that make sense? Like maybe we can capture some like, what are the things that we want in a tool that that measures performance? Um, so what do people think? Does it? I add four things. There's probably a lot more. So like what you know, what are some things that I can write some down? So I, I would move go profiling. There might be a third uh, category here on the agenda. Okay. Uh, I, so we have tools to measure performance, uh, to measure measure scale would be accurate as much as to create uh, stress at scale or something like that. And then there's tools to, um, what would you even call it? It's like, it's not really measuring as much as it is, uh, like I consider profiling something that helps us address um, problems we found with performance. So it, it's not really measure. I don't know what it's measuring. I guess it's measuring how long we spent. Okay. Ah. It's more debug profiling or something like that. Maybe that's not important delineation right now. All right. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna walk back on that. <laughs> okay. That's fine. So we can call it. So we'll, we can and, and and again, like this could be all one tool. I I don't really you know, and, and these could just be all features, whatever. But um, so we could just start. I don't know. We just start with this. Like I um. I guess, so profiling, we could say like, we will say this is a requirement. Like we want to do profiling with this performance tool. Does that make sense? Like, I, I think that's like something that would fit here. Like, I think that's something we want to do. Like uh, measure, we want to do some measurements of periods of time. We want to record phase changes. Like we want to know every time we go from running or from pending to scheduling. Uh, we want to capture that. Um, places we want to record, like what else do we want in here? Like um, what are some other ways we can measure or like, I, I consider this like measuring code, David, like uh, we're measuring or, or we're sort of like, we're, we're profile. Yeah, yeah we're, to, we're- To me, just like- Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, to me, sir, there's, there's like two different parts of performance measures we we already do and we, we can do, or I, I, I'd like to see um, the one being measurements do, done while developing, like okay. profiling the Go code, seeing how much sp time we spend in the function and stuff like that. And the others are measurements. That's also the period of time stuff that are also useful during operations or not necessarily by a class cluster admin, but by us running during tests and stuff. And that's like kind of two okay. draws so we wouldn't, we... I have in my mind. For like an example, we wouldn't we wouldn't do profiling while we're running large amounts of workload. We're like while we're launching a lot of VMs, right? Does that add is that is that is there any added benefit of doing profiling while we're launching lots of workloads? 
for yeah, a uh, scale test, possibly. Yeah. yeah, that can make sense. Uh, it's, it's the different insights that we're looking at. So one's measuring externally, uh, like how long it takes for certain things to occur. And then I guess the profiling is measuring internally where we actually spend the most time uh, in our actual functions and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I, to me that makes sense. Yeah, we can, I think that's, I think it sounds like the same tool. Okay, so like maybe we can, so what, yeah, like what else do we want to, like what, a, what else do we think of, like what do we, how else do we want to measure, I guess is the question. And what do we want in our tool? Anything specific you can think of? Uh, a few things I can think of okay. from a developer's perspective is I want to know uh, what API calls are re resulting from our controllers. Uh, like how many calls are being made and what calls what to what APIs are being made at what frequency, things like that. Uh, I guess I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I'll throw out what, what's interesting and we can talk about where we can get all this because there's places we can already get some of this information. Another one that's interesting to me is understanding our work queues a little bit better, uh, knowing how many times they are uh, popping per a, uh, a key. So understanding like between going from posting a VMI to running, uh, for example, how many times are we processing or syncing that virtual machine to get there? And that gives us some indications of, of problems if uh, you know the average amount of work we do is greatly increased. If we can lower the amount of work that we're doing to get it into that state, that seems like that would improve things, possibly. So yeah, queue length and um, maybe statistics on how often uh, keys are called. Um, Okay. Yeah, the, like those topics are kind of under the the uh, API pressure group, like the, the pressure we cause by uh, calling the API server a lot, or the pressure we get from the API server because there's a lot of objects. Like watching config maps is like <laughs> can be very horrible. <laughs> so stuff like that is related to all the all the caches and work queues we have that can that I'd like to see more numbers about. How we how we behave at scale and if our code is performant enough. Yeah. So one thing we've seen is that um, we try to find trends that are linear and trends that are exponential. So sometimes we have trends that look good in small clusters because maybe we're watching all objects in the cluster, but there's just not that many of them. But then that quickly multiplies uh, as the scale of the cluster and the number of workloads and other types of objects um, increase to the point where it it's not just a linear progression at performance, it's it's worse. And those aren't always mm -hmm. obvious. I think so also, we, we had Go profiling here, but just measuring simple things like um, the, the CPU and memory usage of our controllers uh, is useful. I think yeah, we... op open Go routines, stuff like that. Oh yeah, open Go routines too. Uh, I think it would be better to... So sorry, I interrupted you again because we have delay, I think. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, no worry. Uh, so yeah, I think we, uh, it would be better to also measuring the, uh, the latency in the controller. So for example, when the, uh, the, the pod creation and the, uh, the VMI creation are not synchronized. So the pod creation will most likely be very fast. And uh, but the VMI uh, status updates would be uh, later uh, caused by the the, queue, the the keys are queued up in the worker queue for the available worker to pick up. Um, so uh, the later that that is the uh, latency. Also, I think uh, it would be um, better to measure the uh, the event handler called called back in the controller and how the key. Uh, after the, the, the event in queue, the key in the worker queue, and how soon the key will be picked up from the queue. Interesting. Can you add that in there, Fan, what you just said? I think under yeah. work queue link. Yeah, add that in there. Okay. Yeah, sure. Those are all good things. Okay. Um, 
these, I, I'm thinking of some other things like um, um, like portability. I, some of those, that's another one that, that I'd be interested in. Even this is not necessarily um, to measurement or just has to do with measurement, but this is something that I want as a requirement. Like, where, who's going to be using the tool? Like the different profiles. Like, I want to use it as a developer. Um, I we also want to use it in CI. Um, who else? Like, I'm sure some QA people would probably love to use this. Um, and then uh, who else? Like, where? Can, like, how can we hand this to people? Like, I, like we just give them like a pod, like or something to run. That's another thing I'd be interested in. The way that we can move it around. So lightweight, something that's that's just portable. We just launch in a cluster, and then maybe it does some measurements and returns or something. Okay. Sorry, David. You were, I think, we're trying to say something before. I don't know. Oh, I, it, I, I think I was. I can't remember. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't going to uh, add much to the conversation if I can't remember it. All right. That's fine. Okay. So we have. Um, okay. So we have something. All right. So we do. We have some profiling. We're going to measure periods of time. We're going to. Um, okay, so uh, um, uh, how, okay, we we another thing. So we're measuring periods of time. Um, how about like um, like creating like um, we we probably want to like I'm thinking about how we control this. Like we could um, we could have like a like it, like well, wait, I guess the way I'm describing or the way that it sort of seems here is like we're doing a lot of watching. Should we also create in the same tool like? create a thousand VMs and watch them? Or do we just watch and then let someone else create? Like we just, I guess, watch Hey, them. Ryan, this is, this is Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Hey. Um, I, was, I was actually gonna bring that up. I, I think we have a number of sort of um, in-house tools or, or things that, that do both. And I think, I think it would be good to, I mean, we need to evaluate that and talk Are we writing tools to simply observe, or are we writing tools to induce activity? So I don't have the right answer to that, but um, that's an important okay. question. I think yeah. I, I've given this a little bit of thought. I like the idea of separating the two. So separating the tool that creates the stress and then uh, have something like, because it might be disjoint how we monitor it, we might be getting some statistics from uh, Prometheus. We might be getting some from some other profiling tool we made. It's unclear to me exactly where all of these measurements are going to live and what's appropriate even. So the idea of separating the two tools or separating the ability to, to measure from the ability to generate load, uh, I, I think that will serve us well. I, I think we already have a separate effort to that focuses on, on creating stress and load tests. And um, so what, the, the stuff I selected right now, this all kind of is in the area of Prometheus metrics that they already work, are working on to export from test runs and stuff. So that's all stuff they, they can work on the load testing with. Um, that all feeds like Prometheus style metrics. The, and the Go profiling is more on the dev side. And like, maybe if we add tracing, that can fill into that. But these here seem like usual metrics possibly I, I think i'm i'm leaning towards that if we could uh enable some sort of debug uh for, i don't think we'd want to ex always export all these metrics to prometheus but it could be um like enable debug metrics or something like that yeah and then when we look at uh results over time periods uh we could you can get that from prometheus in the time series yeah. How do you all feel about using uh, Prometheus? I'm a little uneasy about requiring Prometheus here. Is that something that people on the call feel comfortable with, or what are the thoughts? What do you mean by requiring Prometheus? Like, um, um, so, like in other words, we don't like because I guess what I was thinking is that we could just have output be um, anything that the person that's using the tool chooses. So like it could be export to Prometheus, export to JSON, export to file, you know, any sort of format that we can use to sort of um, create data. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, that's a, that sounds good. Here's the problem with that. When I'm looking at this list, some of these, uh, some of this information already exists in Prometheus. So it's specifically like API calls made. We can take a look at the API server and the metrics that are already exposed there and detect what comes from our VERT controller pods, for example, and we can mm -hmm. create um, data. We can get data about that already. So it already exists in Prometheus. I don't know how, like at that point it becomes disjoint because we'd either have to gather that information ourselves and export it to a different format or I, I don't even know how that, or recreate something similar. I see. Um, right now our code base, our metrics code base seems to be very focused on Prometheus. Like we import the Prometheus uh, code to, to generate our metrics. Um, that's a format that a lot of scraping services can read nowadays. Um, but if we would look at stuff like open telemetry, which is like more generic around the whole metric story, um, I think they support different exporters that can be configured. Like you say, you want to export to Prometheus or to Stack Driver or Datadog or whatever. I think that's in their scope and that's more generic. If we really want that, but right now we focus on Prometheus, we have the metrics out there. I don't. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't start with that. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm thinking is that, like, um, like I talked about with the, the different personas, like in 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 uh, like Dev QA um, or wherever, whoever is using this, uh, I'm just sort of thinking of in terms of the their their on ramp, like you know, what's their initial, you know, what do they need to do to get to leverage this tooling. And so we are, we're we're adding dependency if we say you have to use Prometheus. Um, yeah, I, I like I think like so I guess what, what I'm saying is like some of the stuff um, like I like you say API calls it definitely like I already see like how that is already recorded in Prometheus so we can capture it. Some of the other stuff like I'm seeing um, like for instance uh, like phase changes um, like. It, I could see it being almost in both cases. Like, like this doesn't exist, right? Like we don't have, like if, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna like record phase changes. This sounds like I'm gonna write some code. I'm gonna write some code that records this or something. And then it just, and then we're gonna report, we're gonna expose it on an endpoint. Yep. And so like some of these, like I'm wondering if that they, that they could do either one. Yeah, absolutely. Like a, we can write a package of some sort that uh, begins capturing this this kind of developer insights, and then it can have different ways of exporting it. So to Prometheus, uh, maybe to a locally, and then aggregated via a sub resource endpoint or something like that. Um, we can do that. There's going to be gaps. I, I guess the thing that I get concerned about is. I just want to make us sure we understand that there's going to be some information that Prometheus already have. We already have metrics for that are exported into Prometheus. Um, yeah. We're in the cluster that aren't going to be representative there unless we totally recreate um, the way the, these things are collected. Um, so if we're yeah, okay with think... that, then sure. By the way, those those CPU memory open coroutine stuff we already have. I, I I look at that for some debugging. That's already in there from the Prometheus Go code. For example, yeah, like I, I don't think I actually think we don't even need to change this. I think like so. I guess we could, like, so this this part right here. Um, yeah, I like if this if I'm looking at doing, I'm looking to measure performance. I, I guess when, so. What I'm trying to get is like, what is like the bare minimum like in terms of like, okay, this is useful. I could hand this to QA. They can give me a measurement back, and it's like very little on ramp. And like, what are like two or three things I need like. Here's one. Um, here's here's two, and, and like here's three. Like that's that's it. And, and like this stuff, like that's great. And I can maybe that's like I consider it almost more advanced. Like I don't, I almost don't even want to touch it. Like I think that's good. Like we we have that as Prometheus, and we just leave it like that. And then these like three things, like these simple things, like it, it's basically just a, a blob of text. Like we could just have that be like our our for a format that is that can we can get from the tool that can go to any type of format and Prometheus. Yeah, with the format wise, I see a, a, a slight issue with the uh, with the more metricsy stuff because like right now it's being output as time series, like it, it gets scraped. It's not we don't record the Go code doesn't record time series. I don't think it should because like a database like that grows insanely. 
Um, so right now there's a output of the Prometheus metric every X and Prometheus scrapes at every X. Yeah, also, let me also mention, so this, this okay, so this is in this right here, this Prometheus reporting. This is like what I'm hearing is like, this is in like already baked into the code. What part of what I'm thinking is like, so we have like a tool that measures performance, like, um, uh, like would, for example, this recording happen all the time? Would we say that like, if we record phase changes, is this something we do all the time? Or is this something only we do when we want to specifically measure performance. Only, I think that would be something we enable as a debug uh, metric. Okay. Yeah, yeah so maybe so that's what the line theory. is. Like we're, the, we're like sort of divvying between the two. It's like, like if we want to do additional debugging things, like, I, like we're already reporting this, right? So like I, maybe some of the things that we consider to be like the specific addition, you know, the additional debugging tools that we enable because we want some more information are the things that we allow different formats or we look to mm -hmm. have different formats for. For the phase change, so to some extent, we might already have the metrics implicitly because we update the conditions conditions on, on our resources with timestamps. So that could, and, and there's the Kubernetes events, to some extent, like that could already be extracted. We would just build that into the operator more consistently, or uh, maybe I'm not sure. Okay. Like I, I see different ways for those phase changes. Either, like one could be a a metric style. We we record when we reconcile if a resource switched conditions into ready or a VM into. Yeah, if it changed phase and we record the timestamps into the time series. Um, or we add like tracing that is annotated with a resource name and namespace. And we actually have a trace how long it spends in what phase. There's ways of reporting it if we want to, but it is more, I don't think we can extract that with our current metrics. I'm unaware how we would do it. Oh, yeah. it, it, it would be no code either way, yeah. You think this would be no code? It would add, it, it would be new code. Oh, new okay. code. So okay. I, I think you're right, Ryan, in saying that this would be uh, something new that we would have the potential of exporting in multiple ways. Okay. I, um, okay. I guess like, um, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think like what, Maybe we can break this down a little bit more into, let me, I kind of want to change this list a little bit into the things like I, I here's like one of them, like uh, um, a few of these, like maybe we can break apart this. So like what, what currently exists in like Prometheus? Let me just, um, uh, uh, the Go metrics. I think we have some API call latency stuff, but I, I never figure out what it actually does. It's like the naming is a bit confusing. So. We have uh, AP, API call information that's exported by the Kubernetes API server. Yeah. So we have a lot of that, but that that's coming from a different view than we're talking about. I think it's still accurate. It tells us what's uh, being made and how frequent. So I think it's good enough, but it's coming from the, the insight is coming from the API server rather than from the actual component that's making the API calls. I don't think we have any, I look for those. I don't think we have any metrics telling how our APIs get called, like how our own latency is. But I'm not sure about that. I couldn't find it at least last time I looked. So does this look right what I have? Like what are, what should be under Prometheus here? Like what already exists under Prometheus? That's something we are, that we, we like, I guess the, the divide would be what would take no code to get. And I don't think that the, the event callbacks I don't think are under Prometheus. And okay. latency between pod and creation, at least I haven't seen yet. Okay, so both of these go up. So is it, is it just the CPU? CPU and API calls. Uh, yeah. I would API, API calls made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe, yeah, I think uh, that's about the best. Okay, have. and then should any of these, um, be like maybe just a little bit of code in the monitoring side that 
that like we just we're just missing that'll suddenly be that we can add to Prometheus? Like, is anything that we see in here? Oh yeah, we can export all, uh, the majority of this. Um, okay, so all of it will. We, okay, so this. So then, when okay, then when this makes sense, like, so if I if we created a new tool, it would be capable of doing go profiling, measuring periods of time, record phase changes, and we just kind of like. So like things that are focused on like a period of time that are additional debugging things that we're doing when we're doing load um, that we can capture output on. Some of those, some of those things I, I think can do can be done in a separate tool. Like the uh, face changes in theory could be just small application that watches the resources and exports the face changes. The go profiling would be more feature we have to add to our binaries. Yeah, so with uh, uh, work cool tool. link, work cool link, work Q link, yeah. I think. I think, it, I think it makes sense to have all this in a package within Kubevert. Uh, yeah. This actually, yeah. the way I envisioned possibly this this tool that you're talking about is kind of deep profiling and maybe recording um, some of this developer information is that we can create a sub resource endpoint that um, it turns on profiling within all our components to begin capturing all this information. And then when we stop it, uh, it can aggregate all that information and just give us back a report. So that would uh, give us some averages uh, and maybe like P99 of certain statistics and things like that that we find interesting. Those same statistics can be exported to Prometheus if we want. And uh, so people can use Prometheus to, to gain the same insights they wanted, but you can get your nice like print out if you if you want it okay so i guess so let me let me characterize this section so this is going to be um this is going to be um so measurements uh developers or actually it should be anyone um anyone wants to turn on for a period of time during code to get more Okay, something like that. Yeah. Like that's what we want to do with this sectioning requirements. And then this is what we, and we'll, so we'll export to, so export all the data, or she, I'll say data can be exported into, can be exported into many formats. Prometheus uh, file standard out. I don't know something like that. It'd probably be some sort of JSON format. Thing. Yeah. I, and something I would just start like okay. with something really simple. Like I even did like a, a proof of concept on how we could call the resource, the sub resource endpoint, um, call like enable something in all of our components for a period of time, and stop it, and then gather results. Uh, it should be just practical to start with. I don't want us to, if it makes sense for us to start with just exporting uh, this kind of deep insight stuff into a file in JSON format or whatever, then great. Let's just do that. And then we can talk about Prometheus in the future or something like that. Just, I guess approach I, I just, it in a way that it makes the most sense to actually be used immediately. I just think the gathering and getting into JSON file is actually the most work compared to exporting most of the stuff to Prometheus because you have to make up your own storage for that. You have to aggregate all that stuff somehow. And the metrics, I, I don't know if that's, even for the, for the face changes, I don't know how we would record that properly. You don't have to put in a, uh, you don't have to store it anywhere. You can store it all in memory and then you export it uh, just over the network, and then it's aggregated at um, like invert CTL or something. When uh, the um, sub resource is returning all this information, aggregate, it's going to aggregate it all in some sort of JSON format, and then you're just dumping it to a file when you get it. So it's it's all in memory until it actually lands on your local machine. Yeah, but that's like that's already the hard part. Like we would have to store data memory that could be quite a lot and we there when we already have systems that can do that for us like something like Prometheus or any any service that can scrape a metrics endpoint 
like even the even the tracing that I'm 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 still a big fan of and would like to see super tracing it just exports traces and they get collected by something else. It doesn't store anything in memory because that's too much. Sure. About that point, we're depending on a, a separate tool, uh, which is it's fine if that's uh, if we consider that part of our requirements. I'm just not sure we're willing to make that jump yet. It doesn't sound like. Yeah, like I like I guess what I'm saying is like yeah, I think um, giving the opportunity for someone to export the data, I think is I I, I understand what you're saying about previous. It makes sense to me. Like it's important. It's a, it's a great tool and it, it gives us a lot of power. It, it's just it's the dependency of of having to have it. Well, I think like in a lot of cases we're we're going to leverage that. But I also think there's value in, in also having another data format, you know, whatever JSON. Um, but I, I think that's something we can evaluate. Right? Like as as like we go a little bit further, like Dave was saying, what's the easiest? I think we'll get sort of a reasonable idea for that when we start yeah. you know, looking at this a little I, deeper. I just want to avoid us writing our own in memory time series database. It wouldn't be a time series database. It would be a um, a metric that's calculating a single like we're not we're not going to be taking samples of this over and over and over and presenting all those samples back i don't think i think it would be okay like, that's what for, i understood for example the work queue length or whatever we probably have like a running average and maybe um like a max and a min or, or things like that that we we keep in uh, memory not a this is the sample every millisecond of how many things like it wouldn't be time series that's not what I envisioned, at least. Maybe that's okay. <laughs> what that, others are thinking. I know that's where, where our difference comes from. That's I, that, because I was expecting you want the, the metrics to be use, as useful as we would get them from something like Prometheus, where you have to graph, and that's what you want to dump. And Yeah, okay. well, for some of the things, like um, for like phase changes, right? Like we're going to have timestamps for each of the events for like, let's say we're watching for 10 minutes and we see a bunch of pod changes, we'll have We'll have um, well, you know whatever X amount of pods that go through those phase changes, and we'll have time stamps for them. Hmm. Yeah. So, it so like we... th that would still be a um, a single. So we would have maybe it's a VMI that every VMI would be a key, and then you'd have a series of mm -hmm. um, of timestamps associated with each phase of that VMI, which would be exported. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, like for the for the for the um, uh, phase changes, I still think it wouldn't have to be uh, something that runs in our operator or anything. This can this could be done by tool that's externally and and exporting this stuff because it's getting it from Kubernetes events anyways. Yeah. Could be enough to watch the resource. D does it? Wait, say that again. Uh, it could be something that gets it from where. And anything that, like, it, it just, as far as I understood the phase change, it just has to be something that watches um, the VMI resource on the Kubernetes API server and records itself. It doesn't have to be in the in the recons in the operator itself. It can be sure. any application yeah. that does that. Yeah, it can be anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a metric right. that we can start. Maybe, maybe we should just start uh, getting more comfortable with Prometheus. I feel like there's a general hesitance. Maybe it's just myself feeling this way of uh, depending on it. But if we get more comfortable with it, maybe a lot of our apprehensions go away. Um, is it even an option, Ryan, for you all to uh, set up a Prometheus stack and use that? For yeah, no, graphic? I think that's. Yeah, I think that's fine. It, it, it's, it's, I, like I said, I think like, I think that like I'm open to going, I, from my respective, I'm, I'm okay. Like if we go on and go with um, Prometheus or whatever, like, I think these are all good options. It's, it, I guess what's mostly like that I just wanted for, to sort of protect us the, sort of the idea, like I talked about portability, like if, like the, the different ways, different personas, like people who want to use different, um, so different stacks. Like if I'm just doing like regular development, like I don't really have a Prometheus stack. Like I just have my cube cluster and it's just got Qbert on it. And you know, what do I need to do to get all the additional metrics? I have to go and 
a naval one. I don't know. Maybe that's just a case that I have to deal with because of um, I'm doing load testing or I'm doing performance, and so I should have one. So maybe that's just a requirement. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think it might be the case. I know at least um, in our development development environments that we're using um, with like cluster up and stuff like that, there is a provider that's being developed in Kubert CI that's going to come with Prometheus and Grafana built in automatically. So it's going to be something that's more accessible to developers soon. Uh, maybe, maybe this is something we have to just um, accept. I'm unsure yet. Uh, I'm just nervous that we're going to be fighting, uh, trying to get a representation, uh, a custom representation within um, these file outputs that is not flexible as what we can build in Grafana. Yeah, that's, that's is, we can. I can just take like so. I guess let me look at it um, from a different way. Um, if we enable this stuff to be scraped by Prometheus and we say, okay, if Prometheus, like I'm trying to think, can I enable these identical use cases? Like, so I guess, well, all right, two things. One of them is uh, the on-wrap was one of my concerns. Like, okay, I guess like, so if I get over that, that's that's fine. The other thing is um, uh, other types. Like um, one of the things like I like to, to like look at is I'll want to take, with, like with, specifically with JSON, like I can take it, I can make, visualizations, like if I wanted to do it in Excel or in any other format, I have a little bit more flexibility and I could just scrape Prometheus, right? Just because it's just JSON yeah. there anyway, I could just, and then build it from there. Well, you can use Grafana to build those same graphs. Uh, yeah. A lot of cases. Yeah. Or the Prometheus UI or as, yeah, you can't just, uh, Prometheus is not exactly, is not JSON, I think, but you can, yeah, you can just scrape Prometheus or you can, like if you don't want to want your Prometheus, you can just build an application that understands Prometheus format, which is very easy and okay. scrape the endpoints yourself. I think, yeah, then I think, um, why don't we just, I think we'll simplify. Why don't we just start with one? Why don't we just start with Prometheus then? And then if we have a problem with it, let's, we'll add the other stuff then. Let's just like, okay, that's this the right, is too much. I hate it, but I think that's the right approach just to see how far that gets us. Um, if we find it, obviously, just isn't going to give us the fidelity and uh, response that we need, then we'll create yeah. our own thing. Uh, there's some things that can't be replaced, like the, the Go profiling when it actually comes to understanding where we spend the most time and what functions and things like that. Certainly, we have to build our own tooling to, to aggregate that. But uh, really, all this other stuff that I'm seeing we can export as a metric. Like the phase changes we can create uh, in our watch and the VMI controller say, okay, we got a VMI. We see that the previous one didn't have this phase and now it's running. So we can export to whatever is exporting to Prometheus that, that information so it gets out there. Yeah, uh, David, maybe some context on the Go profile Did you, because you talked about aggregating. Um, did you have more in mind than what the uh, Go PProf stuff outputs on an endpoint if you wanted to? Or do you, do you mean aggregating those for per service? Yeah, it would be aggregating the PProf uh, information back. Uh, so that binary PProf information would be aggregated back per component where you could go in. And, okay. Yeah. And basically, I, I can consider like using BERT CTL, um, dev, start profiling. Uh, then stop profiling and then dump, and then it's going to dump all the aggregated PPROF uh, information into like a zip file or something. Yeah. Can okay. Access it. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. And like, I, I want to advertise this again. Like, I think quite some few, including the work use, could be something that profits from if, if we think more about adding tracing to our, our code in general. Like uh, open tracing or what it's called now, like you, you can get flame charts of what is what is going on in our operators. Kubernetes is doing this now to some extent, and um, it's it's pretty great. Yeah. What tooling okay, do I, you need for that to visualize that, Kevin? Uh, to visualize that, there is a few. Um, I think the most common one is Ye called Jaeger. Yeah. Um, um, but like I, I know I I used one that was built into GCP for a while. Um, I don't know about the others. 
and you can annotate it with like you can even you could even have traces that let you query how a BMI progressed through the cluster. That'd yeah, be so interesting. It, um, I had a, a great time with that, and it gave a lot of insights on our operation on the previous job on because they got stuck in stuff. They were managing Kafka, and Kafka was slow, and we figured it out through that. You mean open tracing? Yeah, open tracing. It's uh, op open telemetry, I think. The one. Yeah, it's called open telemetry now. They merged yep. with open census. Yeah, I think this the, it makes it, like this opens up a bunch of tooling for us. Like going the Prometheus route, it, and even just like some of these things it opens up a lot of tooling. And then even what we can do here with the profiling. So then, okay. So then, I guess to break this to break this down um, to measure performance, it sounds like we have two. We have one tool, and it's it's specifically for the for the profiling and for for doing tracing. And these are just going to be our requirements. And then we have, and then we look at the rest of the stuff kind of as, as metrics. So these would be basically a package inside of Qbert. So not necessarily a tool, it's just something that um, is there. And then these, we, we enable, right? Like we enable with, we have like some performance sub resource that we enable. Like, I think we already collected these. You said we enable these for, for, for a more advanced look at to what's going on for a period of time. Does that make sense? I think that those would be considered developer metrics. So it would be something that would be on by default. It'd be something on the that default. we enable. How we enable it, I wouldn't make that uh, judgment yet. OK. OK. And then, Fan, you added something about a custom metrics API. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's um, that's uh, something relating to how we uh, present the result. So uh, if uh, yeah, I like the idea of using the sub sub resources of the VMI to export the metrics. But uh, I, I, a concern here is uh, if uh, anything changes on the VMI object, will cause the in queue and the creasing the queue length, uh, which might increase the burden. Or overhead in the word controller. So I'm thinking, yeah, just the brainstorming. So if we could using the CRD or export the metrics in the, uh, uh, different than the VMI object, like using the customer metrics API, is that would that be a um, be, um, better? See if I see that looks cool. So you mean we, we can export metrics on API conformant paths and uh, HPA and probably VPA can scale based on those exports. Yeah. And also That's we cool. can extend the, uh, the metrics. That kind of fits in the discussion we had about resource limits a uh, few weeks ago that we would want to scale our components at some point. Okay. Okay, I think we this could be something we could look at as part of design. Okay, I think the the I guess the next step. I think I, to me this makes sense. Like as a set of requirements, and I, I think it's clear to me. Like this is its own tool. This is in core Kubernetes code. So we have I guess two different things. Um, uh, okay, do we have, I think, so I think what next steps on this is we need to, we need to have like a formal design. Does that, does that make sense? Like we can do, let's do, let's do some two designs, one here, one here. Um, does anyone want to volunteer for this? Like, a, for like, for one of these and we can look at, uh, or I mean, or we can do it together. I don't know what, what, uh, what do people think? Does that make sense as a next step? Could we just tackle one of these? So what if we just tackle okay. metrics for now? Okay. That's I just don't want to split us too much. Okay. Yeah, we can focus on on, on worm first. I think. Okay. Um, so does we a design have a few? Sorry. Does a design make sense? Like, do we next up here? Do we want to make a design doc? Do we, should I just do we? create a bunch of issues with a list of this, these things, and we can kind of split them up as a group um, developing these, like what if, 
what do we want to do? I think the design I is uh, enabling a a path for us to enable uh, <laughs> debug metrics. So uh, that, that and these are all just items that we would add after the fact. So how do we approach um, turning on debug metrics in Qvert and exporting them? Uh, and then we can just add all of our metrics to that package. Uh, okay. Yeah, that export. needs to be our, our design. Mm. Okay. I think you, yeah, only a few of those I would enable, make disable, enable and disable because like the work queue length and like measure period of time is like kind of given by the metrics concept itself, but work queue length would be something that I would always send out to be honest because it's like no brainer and Maybe. it helps with our scalability testing. And I feel we already have a few initiatives around metrics and alerts and all that. Maybe we should. I don't know the relationship between uh, if we export too much, what that, what load that puts on the like production Prometheus and uh, production mm. time series database. Everything. I don't yeah. want to just flood it with information that is totally useless to 95% of people, especially operators. Like I consider what we turn on by default, something that somebody, an operations team would want to know about. And I don't see work queue length being one of those, for example, I, I could be wrong. I don't know, I, the work queue link, I, I don't know if that's like more, I, I don't know about the work queues in detail right now, but it's more, if it's more a high, high and low watermark thing, I, that could be really helpful because people sometimes wonder why is my resource not being reconciled in huge environments and the ops team can see why, because the work queue is full. Yeah, I, I, I think, well, I, I, I just don't like some of these, yeah, I don't know. I think these need to be turned on and off. Like, I, I just think that, um, at least so from my perspective as, as a developer persona, uh, I only really want to look at this. Like, for instance, I, like, if I know I'm doing a load test, I want to, you know, I have a specific time period that I expect to, for it to be running because, you know, whatever I have this tool generate load. I know when it starts, I know when it ends. Uh, I, I want to capture during that time period, this stuff. Um, and then the rest of the time, I, I really don't care. Like it, you know, I, and then from the operator perspective, from the, the end user perspective, yeah, I, I, what are you, what are you getting from this? I mean, I guess you can get like, okay, and it's taking a long time scheduling. I mean, you could see that anyway, I guess. Um, like some of the stuff, like, yeah, I don't know what, um, it's hard to say what, a lot of the value is so so for us like if, if we talk in the prometheus style metric context for us exporting metrics is as cheap as it gets the only like disabling the only thing we would probably disable is not recording them because to check if it's enabled is more work than actually exporting um we would just disable that we export this metric it would not show up in the metrics endpoint so yeah. we would only relieve pressure from the prometheus that's scraping it uh, and the Prometheus can say, I don't care about this metric and not store it. Um, right. And for measuring a period of time, you would either in this time period, you generate a load and you would only look at this time span in your time series, or you would only scrape during a time series if you turn on your Prometheus just for that. Yeah, that okay. makes sense to me. Uh, so this could be something that we only export these metrics when uh, something in our Keyvert CR is set to export developer metrics or something like that. So you wouldn't have to do it on a time, uh, like start at this time period end at this time period, it could just be either on or off. And then when you want to view what happened during your stress test, you can actually isolate via the time series database, just the results within that time period. Yeah. Okay. This way we make it easy for Prometheus operators to say, hey, uh, please disable that, we're full. <laughs> Okay, so we so it's all right. So a matter of what, so we're gonna collect. So it's just we're gonna always collect. We're just gonna decide whether we're going to export. Yeah, because like the metrics themselves mostly are um, uh, atomic ints or floats. And... Okay, I mean that sounds like to me like we, we kind of just captured a lot of the design, right? Like that that's that's it, right? We just we're going to capture. We just decide we export and. The, the means that we do that in the way that's configurable. I mean, it sounds pretty natural to be on the Qvert CR. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's way good. Opinion. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So then the we're running a long time, but I guess the, so. The last question is then. I I think like that to me seems to be what we'll do. Um. I so I guess I mean what. How do people want to look at this? So I, I mean, if you want, I can write sort of a design for this, like I think and kind of capture this, what we talked about today and some notes and that could just be our like design. Um, I, like the keyword CR, we export it, we choose when to export it, and then, then these are our metrics that we're going to add. And then, you know, maybe we can split up, you know, amongst the group, like how we can implement some of these. Does that make sense? If you're okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Something I just like think okay. uh, one more addition, like some of those might like the, 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 the amount of work required differs quite a bit, like the work length might be surprisingly easy, but the phase changes it might need more of a concept of how we actually record them and where we record them or um, okay. the latency between yeah, I mean, pod BMI and stuff. That's, that's, uh, I think we can, bigger, I, think like, I, I think we've carved it out enough that I think that it's that's something we can discuss in the in the, in the pull request or whatever is working on it can can just get, can kind of take the lead on that because I think because I, I, like yeah you're right in that it is it was a little different for each of them but I, I think yeah that's something we can discuss kind of when we get to start digging into the code. We need to start gaining a lot more experience as a community with Prometheus and building Grafana charts and things like that and to see how well that serves us for what yeah. we're trying to achieve here. We need to be more See, I, I thought that. I thought it's already already pretty established in like there's a lot of Prometheus code in the in the database and in the code we have like we export like uh, alert books and stuff like that. I thought it's it's, it's established to be honest. It's established. It's not that at all. It's the fact that okay. our development clusters don't have Prometheus installed and Grafana oh, okay. installed, and there's friction involved with making that available within our development clusters. So uh, okay. for example, something yeah. as simple, it sounds trivial, but it's not ingress just to view the Grafana dashboard from our developer clusters. Things like that have to be thought through. Yeah, okay. There is an issue. Someone's at it, Roman's doing it. Um, I don't know where it is. There's an issue somewhere. Uh, I have it in another tab somewhere that um, it's looking to be added, I think by default for CI. So that's actually a yeah. dependency yeah. we need to track. So once we get yeah, that, we it's going to be easier from the, the developer flow. And I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if you all are using cluster up and cluster down, things like that for development. Um, but it oh, should make not. it. OK, yeah. Well, if you, if you started to, at least for development, I understand it doesn't make sense okay. for testing. That, that's an easy path to begin just uh, gaining experience with Prometheus and Grafana and all that once, um, once that provider lands. I mean, it's just trivial mm -hmm. at that point. I'm, I'm using, okay. I'm only using cluster sync with my own cluster that has Prometheus on it. Um, but I tried to get Prometheus into cluster up before and I had not enough RAM. <laughs> ah, that's, a, that's a problem. How much RAM do no, you No, no, no. I mean, that, that wasn't the most Prometheus problem. It was, it was me messing up the config because I said I didn't set more than two cores and stuff. Everything died in my laptop. It was not that it's local environment being, I'm not sure. used to it. Well, that's important. So how, how much RAM does your local environment have? Is it less than 32? Uh, no, it, it's, I, I think it is 32, but like okay. it was, no, it wasn't even RAM, it was a CPU cores. Like there's a flag CPU cores that's defaulting to two. Okay. And if you do a lot of work, your two CPUs sadly die at some point. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think it was a documentation or me reading not enough issue. Good to know. Okay, um, I think this is good. I think so. I'll do the. I'll take the item to. I'll capture this kind of everything we talked about here as a design, and in sort of a design document. I'll share it on the mailing list, um, and in the doc, I'll have these. And uh, let's. Uh, we can have some people uh, sign up to take, you know, one of them, or some of them they want to work on, and we can we can start tackling it. Uh, that way. One more addition I have. Um, we have the, the where am I? Uh, the API calls mapers. Um, I recently checked, and the only way we see if uh, the API calls 
incoming to our API uh, is through the API metrics exported by Kubernetes. And they are not that great from what I've seen so far. Like one problem being we only get latency across some endpoints and they get polluted by uh, the uh, console and stuff called. So our, our request latency is insanely high because people do console. Oh. And so we might want to look at API calls incoming to us as well. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, yeah, add it. That's definitely something um, we could we could look at. Okay. Um, great. Uh, I, we're already a few minutes over. So I, I think um, that's good. I'll do. We'll look at this. Uh, so next time we can talk about scale or whatever. Let's we'll just focus on this. Um, we gotta get our measuring down first. So let, let's do that, and um, we'll start start um, executing on that. Okay. Are there any other items? And otherwise, we can we can close on that. Sounds good. Thanks. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.